Good morning, Maggie. Thanks for the great cuddle. And watch this. Watch her eyes, my friends. Oh shit. It's time. Let's go outside. Come on. Yeah. Hey Buckley, come join us, would you? At around 8.30 in the morning and answer all your questions and chat while we play Frisbee with Maggie. Rip it apart, girl. Rip it apart. Yeah. Here's Maggie's breakfast. We got vegan kibble, V-Dog right there. Beet greens, celery, little purple sweet potato, and cauliflower. See, Maggie eats just as good as any of us. Hey, hey. Go over there and sit. Sit down, good girl. Now stay, stay, stay. Okay. Ah, she drops the celery. Very interesting. But I bet she'll eat it after. Let's see. Oh, someone's getting picky. Well, I'm really just trying things out, but here's what happened. She ate all the V-Dog and she ate all the cauliflower. What else did I have in there? She ate all the potato. She did not eat the raw celery, which makes total sense. There's no calories in there and she could tell. And she didn't eat the raw beet greens, although she ate the steamed beet greens last night. Maggie, I am learning about your dietary preferences. It's all good. When I got into LA from this bike tour from Alaska to Los Angeles, which was about one month ago, I was, I had a bit higher body fat percentage than I ideally want to. Uh, I live my life on a bicycle, I'm very athletic, I like to move my body, I like to stretch, and I got to a point where I was emotionally eating so heavily just from like some anxiety and stress about finally being in Los Angeles. I didn't know how I felt about that. I was gonna see my family. I had all these friends to see. I was hosting people. Um, and it was just accumulation of all that I had done. And I found myself the last couple weeks before getting into Los Angeles emotionally eating. And I made some videos about that. And I said, when I got to Los Angeles, I wanted to eat a lot healthier, maybe lose a little body fat, just like feel more functional and better and get to my natural weight because I didn't think I was at my natural weight about a month ago. Um, because of my past with <clears throat> eating disorders and over-exercise and body image issues, I said to myself, Jackson, can you try to get back and lose a few pounds and get back to your comfortable weight while you're here in LA without weighing yourself on a scale, without looking at yourself in the mirror all the time, without calorie counting or calorie restriction, just do it from exercising in a fun way. Like you've seen, I haven't gone out and taken a hard bike ride once since I've been here. I've gone on like two or three run jogs with Maggie and we go extremely, extremely slow. Here, Max. Um, and so I haven't done, I, I haven't done, I haven't lifted any weights. I do like push-ups and pull-ups for 10 minutes a day. And I just wanted to see, could I, could I get back to that, that sound is Maggie with her frisbee, obviously tearing it apart. <laughs> Maggie, I'm trying to make a clip here. But, um, I just wanted to say to my, see, and also to inspire you all, could I have some body results without honestly trying at all, just making sure to not like overly emotionally eat, not to eat a ton of junk food. But you saw, I've eaten vegan ice cream, I've gone out to multiple restaurants, we had epic potlucks, I've eaten cobbler pie, I've eaten tons of vegan ice cream, uh, I ate the Impossible Burger, but I did that all in the context of like being pretty mindful, maybe 80 or 90% of the time. I've been eating very raw till four, like only, you know, simple sugars, sweet fruits, smoothies in the morning. And, and, I'm, and, and the biggest thing is I'm not like, I'm, I'm trying not to just like binge hard and eat crazy amounts of junk food at 11 at night when I'm about to go to bed and I just edited for two hours and I'm hungry again. Instead, I say, look, do I need to eat that ice cream right now before I go to bed? Or should I just go to bed and then wait tomorrow morning to eat something healthy after I've already had like a fully satisfying dinner? And so I've been more mindful about that and I didn't weigh myself before, so I can't tell you how much weight I've lost, but I'll show you images of what I looked like when I got back from, uh, or when I got into LA a month ago and now look at me. I have lost a lot of excess fat. I'm still healthy and strong. I feel good. I got some 
ab definition, not that that really matters, but this is just to serve you all, to show you that you can lose weight, get to your like healthy weight goals without exercising like crazy and without dieting like crazy. Fuck that. I don't, I didn't do any of that. I just wasn't being stupid. Uh, you know that if you're trying to lose weight, it's not going to serve you to eat uh, oily food or really any food at midnight before you go to bed. You know, there's a few simple principles. Eat, um, you know, eat in proper times. I also experiment a little bit with uh, intermittent fasting, but barely. I have like a 14 hour fast and a 10 hour eating window throughout the day. And I've just been eating healthy ass foods, potatoes, rice, beans, uh, fruits. You've seen what I eat. I show it every day in my vlog and look at that. I look so much different than I looked a month ago. I feel so much healthier. I feel fit and active and I can just go crush it. And Maggie and I, you know, this was really in solidarity with Maggie because we're both on a weight loss journey. But, you know, let me know what you think. This right here is results without dieting. It's 100% drug free. Uh, it is emotionally wonderful. I still eaten some junk food. Like there was nothing extreme about what I did in the last month. You can watch the videos. You've seen how I've eaten, but just with little changes, you can have such dramatic results. You just got to be smart and you have to be consistent about it. But really in only 30 days, you can, you can transform your body pretty quickly. Now, time to make breakfast. Fresh squeezed orange juice from yesterday, two bananas, a few frozen navel oranges, a few strawberries and some mint. That is my smoothie this morning. It's gonna be epic. In alignment with these uh, weight loss principles when you are trying to transform your body, I got a comment on a live stream the other day that was like, how do I really know when I'm hungry and satisfied, or, or when I'm hungry or when I'm satisfied and, I, and I'm good? Hey Maggie, you were barking. I told you to go sit on the bed and stay. Can you sit for me? Sit. Good girl, stay there. I love you. Here's a great example. I made two smoothies, one with daily green boost, one with that. This is so delicious by the way. And maybe I'll start with drinking one smoothie I'll go edit, I'll go drink it, I'll wait 10 minutes, and then I'll just ask myself, am I hungry? Am I thinking about food? Do I need energy? Or am I good? Was this good and can I keep working? You know, sometimes we make food and then we just eat whatever is in front of us without thinking about were we full halfway through or do we need to make another portion? Um, it's a great example. Don't only eat what is in front of you. Really listen to your body when you are hungry. You want to go outside? Come on, play with your frisbee. You want to toss? Good boy. Nice. How can I edit vlogs if my left hand is tickling you, Buckley? My right hand is playing with you. Eh, guess it'll just take me a little longer. Amazing work day, so relaxing. Maggie, let's go take a run. This is one of the best investments I've ever made for Maggie and I. It's a chuck it. You will throw out your shoulder if you keep throwing the ball as hard as Maggie and I throw it. This thing, I can get it so far, it's so much fun. Oh, she's gonna be tired. We're just going, we're alternating. I throw the frisbee, she catches it, bring it, brings it back, drops it, then we throw the chuck it. Oh my gosh. This is like, this is like hit cardio. She, she rests, look, it's okay. You wanna rest, you wanna keep going. Also, I'm doing something very important that I'm excited about right now. While I'm playing fetch, I'm on my phone and I realized I have so many different things that I post on social media. I have 
three Instagram accounts. We have Plantriotic, Plantriotic Vibes, and then Maggie's account, Vegan Healer. Yes, I manage Maggie's account. She, I haven't trained her well enough to manage it herself. Maybe give me a couple more weeks, then it'll be all her. I have to get her an iPhone. And then, so I make Instagram posts every day on those accounts. I upload a vlog and edit a vlog and film a vlog every day. I have a newsletter, which I never post, which I'm going to start posting every single Monday. There will be a newsletter. You can sign up to it uh, through my website. Go to plantriotic.com and you'll find it somewhere. There's, there'll be a pop-up that says sign up for the newsletter. And in that, I'll include articles and videos and things that I'm interested in that I saw throughout the week. Any updates or uh, more personal things that I don't share in the vlog and maybe even an extra video once in a while um, on the newsletter. What else? Uh, and then I'm going to start posting a podcast every single week. There's no excuses other than I'm just not organized enough. So I'm also going to post a new podcast episode every Monday on the Plantriotic Podcast. The next episode will be episode 101. And what I just did, the reason why I haven't been posting podcasts or newsletters, and I think the reason I've just been a little bit feeling overwhelmed and stressed with all not overwhelmed and stressed, but there's not enough time in the day. I'm excited to work all the time. I'm just confused. It's like I can't ever get caught up with work. And that's because, you know, I'm self-employed. I don't have anyone working for me or anything. And I put out a lot of content. But what I need in order to be more successful with all that is to make a schedule. So that's what I just did on my phone. I like in, in notes, I just made like a weekly schedule of when I should work on things and certain deadlines because when you have a million things to do and they're all scatterbrained in your head, it's almost impossible to get any of it done because you're not gonna put in a concentrated effort at a specific time. So I just allotted different days and different times to work on stuff and I think I'm gonna be more productive. So get excited. Good job, girl. You went hard. You ready for a snack? Hey, Max. Hey, Maggie. This is a potato. Sit. Yep. This bud's for life. Sit. Roll over. Hey, Maggie, sit. Down. Roll over. Hey, roll over. Good girl, that's a very good girl. Yay, Buckley gets to join us. Are you excited for your walk? Gonna, gonna yell at some doggies? Cause we never trained you at all. Introverted day in a long time where I wasn't just constantly interacting with other beautiful humans Which is great. I love doing that, but I'm also an introvert So I get my energy and like recharge my battery through kind of personal quiet time uh, Whereas extroverts recharge their energy through interacting with people. I love to interact with people But it just gets me exhausted Whereas, come on guys, we've got to make this light. So I'm very grateful and appreciative for all my friends and family who are in my life that I get to see and hang out with. But it's been a great time working today, getting a lot of stuff done and hanging out with the pups and having some me time. It's what I love. Hey Mags, V-Dog also sent us these breath bones. I don't know what a breath bone means, but I bet you'll like it. There's sweet potatoes and parsley and cinnamon and chia seeds and all these tasty things in there. I mean, the first thing I have to do is try it, right? Oh, it's hard. Mmm, I like breath bones. They're actually super, super yummy. Here you go, Mags. Jeez. Yeah. Good vegan doggy. Well, she sucked that down. I now understand why they're called breath bones. They were super tasty, but they leave some sort of minty flavor. It's, there's cinnamon, parsley. I'm trying to figure out what's so minty about it, but they're very good. Maggie's gonna give me very nice licks to the face now. It's gonna taste great. And how cool is that to have a vegan dog food brand 
where every single ingredient is honestly something that I might be able to find in my kitchen. Like there's not one weird thing in there and I can eat it myself. I feel so much more comfortable doing that for my baby than to feed her some random thing with processed weird ingredients. Hey Maggie, on the menu today we got feed dog. Good, she knows to sit. Sit down. Good girl, that's a good girl. We've got V dog, we've got a potato, some cauliflower, and pumpkin seeds on the bottom. Oh. I'm really working on just improving the form of my handstand. When you're doing a handstand at the beginning, you're gonna do what's called a banana back. Let me show you. Here's the banana back, right? Not good. Here's what you wanna do. See what I mean? A lot of it also has to do with mobility. It's not only strength, uh, it's just flexibility in your shoulders, in your lower back, and think about what I do. I spend most of my time on a bicycle in this position. No bueno. Ooh, boy, look at this meal. We got steamed veggies, and tangerines and cucumbers, and we got half a kabocha squash, some potatoes, a roasted beet, cukes, that's strained tomatoes, some beans with nooch and stuff, and an avocado. I'm watching this documentary called Pet Fooled right now. It's about the pet, dog, and cat food industry and how it just goes through the history of how we went from people feeding dogs like raw meat mainly for their pets in the like 40s and 50s and then through the war because the war demanded uh, metal for canned goods for the soldiers. Pet food companies had to figure out how to make dry kibble and put it in paper bags because they couldn't put it in the the raw meat in cans, and they claim that's that's what's gotten us today, where you know the big name brand kibble formulas are made of like corn and soy and things that a dog wouldn't really eat. It's a very interesting documentary. It's definitely a pro feed your dog meat flesh, which honestly I talked about a year and a half or two years ago when I was in college. One of my professors' uh, wife was a veterinarian. Uh, she wasn't vegan at all, and she told me that the most natural diet for our dogs to have is actually like roots, veggies, nuts, seeds, things that they would forage around and then once in a while a dog would run into like liver or organ meats of a dead carcass and they would scavenge on that. That's what she told me. This food tells you, this movie tells you to feed their animals raw meat. Other people tell you to feed animals, vegan dog food, you know, we live in a world now with so many biases and so much information and so many studies, we literally don't know what is up and what is down. Is a paleo diet the best? Is a vegan diet the best? Is feeding your dogs meat the best or plants the best? We do not know. We simply have to inform ourselves, learn from what people are putting out there, try it out, and then just like make up our own minds. I'm gonna keep watching. The most important thing I think I've learned from that is Back to the old outfit, the bike trip outfit. How do I look? This is the my least favorite part of the day. I am very grateful that I have beautiful friends that I've been friends with since I was 10, 11 years old, who I'm gonna go hang out with tonight, but I have to leave her. Just look at how cute this is. I mean, I don't ever look at those eyes. She knows. She literally knows. It's just gonna be for a few hours. You're gonna sleep because you're very tired and it's late. It's already like nine o'clock. I'm just going to a late night concert of my friend and I'll be back and we will cuddle. I'll always come back for you. I know a lot of people have abandoned you in your two years, but never me, baby. Never me. It's me and you forever. You know, after all this time being on the road, it's pretty amazing that I'm still totally confident and good at driving a car.
That was actually some really dope music. I enjoyed that a lot. And my buddy Arlen was the drummer. He raged, rock on. And I got to dance and hang with my friends. It was a beautiful night. I'm blessed. And now daddy goes home to the baby. Can't wait. Much love, Dream Extreme fam.